Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hello, Alice and Jill are here and Steve is joining us. So glad to be with you, everybody. And hello, Steve. We are almost on. Hi there. Hi. Hi. We, we missed you. you. We're, we're doing good. There was just a moment of silence, so well, Alice I, uh, jumped in. Thank you, Alice. I, I was uh, just ran out of time. I was working on a project, and I just ran out of time, but I, I'm all ready to go right here. And uh, welcome, everybody, to New Life Live. This rarely happens, but when it does, it's really exciting <laughs> I for know. Me. It's usually me running in, but Steve. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, you could say that I ought to be ashamed of myself. And there is a new video. There's a brand new video on our YouTube channel by John Townsend on shame. And uh, isn't that good? It's a Club New Life video, uh, and it's being added to our library, actually, is where you could find it. And one day we'll put it on YouTube. But uh, shame is a thing that is real, real easy to dispense, especially in parenting. Very difficult to get rid of but i think a lot of parents use it and it really does some major damage long term what do you think i i i think that parents don't always realize that they're using it and you know when we aren't intentional about how we are going to parent we default to how we were parented yeah and so i think shame is something that has been passed down over and and over again well, I know that it was very common for people to say you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's different ways to get get to that point of wanting them to you know, want to change their behavior. Alice, mm-hmm. your thoughts? Well, a couple action steps we can take to combat this is talking with other parents and confessing, re- re- revealing that we might struggle in this area, mm-hmm. and checking in with our kids from time to time to ask how is our treatment of them affecting them, and how's our discipline, our our um, our tough talks, how are they feeling about it? Yeah, you know, there is, um, we, we kind of hope our kids feel guilt, feel responsibility when they do something mm-hmm. wrong, but if all you have to change behavior is shame, um, then you, you ought to find some new, new things to talk about. And it really could help them because some kids, you could say something that's kind of shaming, they care less because they're <laughs> tough and for whatever reason, or they ignore you. But others, it can really be crushing and you might not even uh, be aware of how crushing it could be. I know when I was raising Madeline, she was one of those uh, kids that you know you just had to be really careful about how you said things and it was so good for me to try to be careful about how I said things because you know when you're on radio and you talk a lot uh, your gift can be your biggest problem <laughs> and uh, as I found in life but yes you know she's uh, she turned out really great and I couldn't be more proud of her anyway just a little reminder of everybody that if you want to want some information on shame there it is in our club new life video library we love that and if you want to join club new life we'll send you a whole library of books this is uh, spring we're, we're almost there and I hope and pray uh, that you get out and do some things you haven't done before but if you find that as the seasons change you don't and you thought you would Uh, Rather than sink into depression in isolation, why don't you call us and let us try to get you some help at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But right now, uh, we're going to be in the studio for an hour, and I'd love to take your phone call at 1-800-229-3000. This could be the day where you get the insight you looked for for a long time, tried to find it in a book, couldn't Google it, but maybe we could give it to you at 1-800-229-3000. I was a little late today. I promise you I will not leave early. I will not leave early <laughs> to repeat the sin. Okay, we'll be back right after this for New Life Live. Thanks for being here. Hi, this is Steve Arterman from New Life Live. and Chris Williams and I are doing the Emotional Freedom Workshop March the 27th. I don't know of anybody 
that wouldn't benefit from emotional freedom. We're all bound or stuck or struggling in some area. What are we gonna do there, Chris? Just really help people get clarity around the places where they're stuck in their life. They sort of circle the same mountain of disappointment over and over and over again. You're gonna be able to see that mountain clearly and get to a new place of what we call emotional freedom, which is simply, I can feel in the world, build a relationship to it, and know what to do with my experiences. The New Life Emotional Freedom Workshop will be held online Saturday, March 27th. Steve Arterburn and Chris Williams will present information on trauma, depression, and codependency and more and small group leaders will help you process the information you learn call 1-800-NEW-LIFE that's 1-800-639-5433 or register online at newlife.com to find out more information about new life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program call 1-800-NEW-LIFE now back to new life live we're back, Steve Arderman here. Before we go to the calls, I want to just mention to everybody that this weekend is our emotional freedom. First time we've done this. We did Finding Freedom, but now uh, Chris and I have developed new material, and it's called Emotional Freedom. And it's, a lot of it's from the Emotional Freedom Workbook. But here's the deal. It's sold out. At least I think it is. And there's a waiting list. And uh, I don't know what they need to do uh, to add more people. But if you want to go, call and get on that waiting list. It is going to be transformational. I'll just say this. If you're stuck in some area and you'd like a different perspective, or if one of these three big ones, shame would be one of them, uh, anger, bitterness, uh, fear, those kinds of things we can help you with. And then here's the big one. You can't be emotionally free if you're dragging emotions and feelings from 10 years ago, from being hurt 15 years ago, from not even realizing the impact of some hurtful people on you. We can help you deal with that. You just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll get you on that waiting list. But right now, uh, let's go to our call. Uh, Sheila has called us from Tacoma, Washington. And, um, yeah, how you doing? Good to talk to you. Listen on the podcast. Hi. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Steve. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. And um, just wanted to say hi to the ladies as well. Hi, hi um, Sheila. I appreciate your ministry. Hi. I, I just became a new cl- uh, Club Life member. Uh, just a lot really? of fun. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Um, so my, my question is, a year and a half ago, or October 2019, I called you. I called you guys, and um, Steve, thank you for calling me brilliant. At that time when I left my my boyfriend of six months. I have tremendous um, insight into people after, on radio, so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you're There's you're more brilliant. where that came from. Yeah. yeah. So you left him? You left the boy? Yeah, I, I left the man. Um, mm-hmm. um, we are both, both in our mid-40s. Um, left him... Um, I did not understand what I was going through because I was furious. I was, I was mm-hmm. enraged, and I broke up with him over the phone. But uh, long story short, after that, I became diagnosed with uh, complex PTSD, and I described also the situation of, of, of this man. Uh, we're both Christians, and I was told by the Christian therapist that he suffers from narcissism, and he was also going from one addiction to another, although he yeah. claimed to be. Um, recovered from it, but now it's became it became a religious addiction where he didn't want to spend much time with me, but rather ministry. But anyway, I left him. Okay. And um, and he uh, and when I reached out to him a couple weeks later to see how he is, how he was, he was in tears. And then the next time he did not pick up the phone. And it's been almost two years. I'm not in a good place. Still on counseling right now. Um, okay. So and, what's the question uh, for us then? Ca- so my question is, right now I'm casually just dating men based on your book, mm-hmm. yeah. including Hannah Clark's book. Mm-hmm. My question is, is it is it all right to check on him right now and see if he's all right, or should I just forget it? I mean, Sheila? I became a friend. Sheila? Yes. Steve here. Remember, I said you were brilliant okay. when you called before, right? But... <laughs> 
But no here, no here is a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Maybe you've I, fallen off the wagon, right? I'm, I'm going to ask brilliant you a wagon. question. I'm going to ask you a question, okay. Okay? okay? When men and women in their late 30s and 40s get together, they develop a relating, uh, a uh, dating relationship. It is very difficult for them to part because you think, oh, you know, look at the stage of life and all, and what I don't want to start over. And you did all that with him and that's really to be uh, commended why in the world would you risk all of this progress you've made dating folks enjoying yourself why would you risk that by calling a narcissist and subjecting yourself to getting tangled up again with a guy that I mean he was really a problem for you why would you want to do that? Okay, let me answer that. I don't think you would okay. want to. I don't think you'd want to do that. But let's hear from Alice and Jill. They may have a totally different perspective. Okay. That's fine. I can handle criticism well, every other day. Go ahead. <laughs> Sheila, I think what Steve is also trying to say is that once you end a relationship, it's no longer your responsibility, obligation, right. um, or really your should be your interest. Yes, you care about him. And narcissists can be very endearing. And there's something about them. that It's like magnetic. And when you fall for narcissists, you just keep getting drawn back. And you think, well, maybe this time. And maybe I can just be his friend. And maybe, maybe, maybe. And again, it just, like Steve said, entangles your heart. And sometimes we oh. have to end things and we are not the person to come alongside them any longer. We have to see that no matter okay. what they say or do, unless they've really gotten a lot of help, and there is hope for, for everyone, right? Unless they've gotten mm -hmm. a lot of help and are doing things differently, um, they are still who they are. They are still the person mm -hmm. that you left, and those reasons still exist. And I want to right. remind okay. you of, of one thing that that God absolutely is on your ex-boyfriend's side, mm -hmm. pulling for him, wanting to draw him. Uh, God wants to draw him to God. And, and I'm, so he's not out there by himself. Uh, you're not the only source of hope or, or reason. You really can surrender him up to the Lord. Alice, your thoughts here. Sheila, I think you would unintentionally play with his heart if you reached back out to him, but you didn't want to pursue romantic relationship again, it, it would, even if it's not intentional, it would um, fire it up again, uh, at least from his perspective. I think and that's true. He may mm -hmm. want and hope for more. There's also a possibility oh. that there is a desire, an unconscious desire on your part mm -hmm. to feed your ego. He wanted you. He cried when you last talked to him. I struggle with the same thing, and, and I had to make a decision and get accountability to not talk with ex-boyfriends in my life. Because if I could call and they would answer and they missed me and they were glad to hear from me, it fed me in an unhealthy way. It was the wrong place to go to get that emotional nurturing. And I think there's a temptation mm -hmm. there on your part also. Well, and there's also, because with a narcissist, if you can get their attention, it really feels like a huge success. Because so yes. much of the time after they have you, they are dismissive of you. And so there's always that feeling right. of how can I get their attention? And so it's very mm -hmm. intoxicating to get their attention. Mm -hmm. You may also have a okay. pull to caretake people mm -hmm. that it's not your job to take care of, probably because of some of that reason you have post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. So look at that tendency right. in your nature and look at how it maybe gets you into trouble or keeps you in unhealthy relationships for too long. Well, and also you can uh, okay. support my new ministry, Adopt a Narcissist, where we're going to uh, try to send them messages. You <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. No, but but here's the thing, uh, Sheila. We're saying to you, uh, stay free. Let other mm. people that don't have any kind of romantic entanglement uh, deal with him, and I think you'll okay. be safe and you'll be grateful 
and you'll continue on this streak of brilliance that we identified the last time you called. So <laughs> hold on and uh, let me, you've got all the dating books and things, but let me send you a copy of the Restoration Bible. It's a great study and devotional Bible that I developed, uh, and I hope and pray that you'll like that. Now, let's go to, um, how about we talk with David from Phoenixville, WB. YN is the station there. Hey, David, how are you today? What's going on in your life? I'm doing pretty good right now, but uh, as you can imagine, uh, life has its ups and downs. It does, um, yes. So right now I'm stuck in a traffic jam, which uh, uh, can precipitate thoughts and uh, things about the past. <laughs> Are you but really an opportunity yeah. to um, digest them, so to speak? You and mentioned the past. To, what um, what is in what's in your past that might still be an issue for you? You said it stirs up thoughts from the past. What what's that about? Right. Well, uh, I'm a 59 year old male. Um, I have a PhD, and. Uh, so academically, um, we're situated fine, uh, but something occurred on December the 4th, uh, 2018. Um, what was that? It was a great emotional setback. I was rear-ended by a truck mm. Mm. and uh, I found myself on disability. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Interrupt. Well, um, yeah. Um, David, are you still on? To, are you still on disability yeah. and held back from the work you used to do? Yes, uh, primarily because of uh, issues with pain and uh, headaches mm. and so forth. But um, I try to. New strategy as a uh, more of like a clinical psychologist um, to really cognitively switch from that center of pain, which exists, hmm. to a center of focus of, um, you know, non painful events. Okay, so um, let's let's get to a question that we could help you with. So, right. what is it that you and what was you thought about calling? What were you thinking we might be able to answer for you? Right. So now I'm at the point where I think I'm at the decision place on asking God um, since I am a good speaker. Okay, so, so um, we're going to have to get to a question because i got a break coming up, and I want to know what okay. is the question you, How do you have I for us. move a... forward right now uh, to really become, you know, like an adjunct professor or ministry work because I can speak well. It's just my mobility. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to ask you and, a quick question yeah. here, a quick question on this. Yeah. Before this accident, were you a fairly active guy and um, and out there, or or more of a recluse? Which one was it? I would say more of a recluse because my work often required seventy hours a week. Okay. And uh, it was only I was okay. living just to let, let, uh, well, work. Well, let me tell you why I asked that, because if. If a person is kind of isolated and reclusive and working a lot, you're going along there, uh, life kind of feels like it's manageable and it's okay f for you. Uh, but we really do need relationship, redemptive relationships, what we talk about, and connection. So when you have an accident mm -hmm. uh, and now the work isn't there mm -hmm. and you've got this trauma, well, that reclusiveness makes it unbearable. It puts you in a place of despair and depression, whereas mm -hmm. you might have continued exactly. on there in your reclusiveness and working for the rest of your life and never knew there was something different. But I think this has 
brought a need to the surface because it's been so yeah. damaging to you. Alice, you, you have a thought here. It looks like you want to share something there with David, before you well, pursue your, your work or whatever ministry God is calling you to, I want you to make sure that you get some care for your heart and your soul and the devastating loss you've had of not being able to work for these years. My sense is that you may not have yet grieved what you're going through with people that can come around you and be empathic and be good listeners to you. And I think that's more important to do for a time before becoming a speaker. You know, that uh, really is good, Alice, because sometimes when we're in these kind of situations, we start getting back. Maybe we get another job, but we haven't really dealt with the other issues of connection, redemptive relationship. And then we blow the opportunity. We didn't realize that that accident had some really devastating effect. And it happened, and here came COVID this past year. That must have really complicated it. After I found the pornography on the internet, I said you either get help or I have to leave this household. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter in place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. I believed that I could do it on my own. I just believed if I tried hard enough and pulled myself up hard enough by my bootstraps, I could do it. It was a battle that I'd had all my life. I had to. The Every Man's Battle Workshop can be a trip to the sexual addiction emergency room. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, April 10th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle Online Workshop. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. The single most helpful thing was to realize that I wasn't the weirdest guy on the planet. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-NEW. L-I-F-E. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New life. That's 1 800 639 5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll free 1 800 229 3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back and we're really glad here mm -hmm. that stuck in traffic, David has called us. And uh, David, hold on here because we've got some hope for you. And Jill, why don't uh, well, you start and, yeah, off? Well, yeah, with... David, our heart goes out to you because this is such a difficult thing. And and literally, you were saying when you're stuck in traffic, you are reminded of this, and it it must be a scary place for you to be there. I I think Alice and it well and Steve too. You both were on track with the need for the grieving to take place. And I think, David, there's so much hope in that. Um, when you are a person that's more reclusive, you don't need um, lots of people around you, but everybody needs some people around them. And I think it, it might serve you well to even get into a therapeutic relationship to deal mm -hmm. with some of the PTSD from the accident and to to be able to process that and and grieve through it as alice was saying and then to to realize that part of this journey of getting back into the workplace means you need to have some some significant re, um, relationships along the way there that can help you and help to position you and to give you feedback um, honest feedback on where would be a best fit for you. Uh, it's hard from a place of aloneness and pain 
uh, and isolation to really make those decisions. And I think yeah. that's why you're calling us today. So I, I feel very so hopeful for you. Yeah. David, would you allow me to give you a tough piece of feedback right now? Um, he would, yes. Then I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. David, um, you probably know this about yourself. Right now when you speak, your depression and the despair comes through in your speaking. And going through this healing process will will brighten that up again, will will unburden you from some of that so that your speaking will be more effective when you launch into that next career in ministry. Well, I'm glad that you called because I think there's great hope for you. And I have been where you are. I know how easy it is to become frustrated, irritated, angry, sink into sadness, depression, mm -hmm. despair. And the way out of it really is doing what you don't want to do. Get the body moving, connect with other people, find groups that are supportive, Bible studies, get involved, be active. Very hard to do, especially when you have a mobility problem, but there's the answer. I'm going to send you two books, Healing is a Choice and Take Your Life Back, and I hope and pray that both of those are going to help you and mean something to you. Now let's go to Vincent from Rochester, New York, and he watches us on YouTube, and you could also right now on the New Life Live YouTube channel. Vincent, how are you today? Hey, how you guys doing? All right. Um, back in uh, 2012, I was struggling really bad with a bad breakup um, back when I was in like my mid-20s, and uh, I was doing a lot of K2, which is this drug, like a synthetic marijuana drug, and uh, I prayed I prayed to God, and I just, you know, prayed through Yeshua, like, please just help me with this, and I felt the whole Holy Spirit, like, overcome me, and I, you know, I said I want to be your soldier, and I want to mm. do the right thing, and I went down on my knees, and God taught me. He spoke to me, and he said, and I keep my soldiers well fed. And I didn't understand what that meant at first, you know, like, what does he mean, you know, food? or And then I realized he meant the word. And throughout the years, I kind of pulled away a bit, went back kind of into the world. Um, I struggle with a lot of uh, head injury, like concussions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then about a year ago, I felt that same feeling. Um, of the Holy Spirit again, and uh, I refused to get down on my knees this time, and I, I'm really afraid that I refuse the Holy Spirit, and I know that the repercussions of that from everything I've heard are are really bad. And, okay. uh, and so, what's I don't the know what's the question for us? Incident. What's the specific question that if we could answer it, you'd feel better? Well, what I really want to know is, did I refuse the Holy Spirit, and if so? Is that unforgivable? Am I mm. like, am I doomed? Or am mm. I, you know, because I, okay, I let, haven't felt right, that me, feeling. So. Okay, let me ask you a question. How do people go to heaven? How do you get into heaven? Repentance and faith. No. How do you get no. into heaven? You don't, people, you could repent of something for the rest of your life. But that's not going to get you into heaven. A lot of people repent. Oh, I'm sorry. Or they make amends. And they do all this stuff. But they miss one key element. Now, what's that element that gets you to heaven? Christ. Okay. Do you believe that Christ died on the cross to save you from your sin? Yes. And that he, he, is, he is my Savior. And yeah. he is everlasting life. He's the only way. He's the only now, way. So, so, so now you're saying... That Christ died for your sins, but because you might have made an error, you might have done this or that, it invalidates Christ's sacrifice on the cross for you? Is that what you're saying? Because that's what I'm hearing, and I don't believe that's true. Mm -mm. You need to go back and read Romans 8, yeah. Vincent, about nothing can separate us from the love of God. And Vincent, I read a, a wonderful book on the Holy Spirit, uh, Bill Bright wrote it, very simple book. When we get back from the break, I want to tell you about that book because I think it's going to help you today. You can't change what you did, but you can change how you see what you did and what you're going to do in the future. 1-800-229-3000 to be on this program. 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you need some help. We want to help you. Counselors, uh, sign up for Emotional Freedom. 
Uh, get on the wait list. Maybe we can find some more <laughs> counselors to help us out this weekend. And then, of course, we've got Every Man's Battle every month. Hold on. We'll be back right after this. Most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of seven books, including Conquer Worry and Anxiety by Dr. Daniel Amen, Healing is a Choice by Steve Arterburn, and Forgiving What You'll Never Forget and Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, both by Dr. Dave Stoop. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. and uh, Vincent, I can't change what happened, uh, you not getting on your knees or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this. When we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit becomes part of our life. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. Bill Bright said, if you'll start to do something, you'll notice some pretty miraculous things, and I have done that. Before I have a meeting, if I will say, uh, Holy Spirit, and that's, that's part of God, that's one of the three in the Trinity, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, I need insight, wisdom, discernment, restraint. Fill me with your Spirit and help me to do something supernaturally that I could not do under my own power. And I believe that the Holy Spirit responds to that. So you could say to one of the three elements of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, you say, I am really sorry that I didn't get on my knees. I've regretted it ever since. But I am going to believe that if that was a sin to not get on my knees, that I am washed free of that sin because Jesus died on the cross for this sin. And I'm not going to live in that shame. And I ask you to fill me, lead me, comfort me, strengthen me, and guide me. That's what I would do. Alice, Jill, any thoughts here from you guys? Uh, I think that's really good because it's pointing us back to Jesus, back to the Father, back to the Holy Spirit, um, and not on our own power. Because there's, you know, this idea out there that we can, like, constantly be jumping in and out of God's will instead of, no, his will is for us to look to him, right? And he will yeah. make our path straight instead of it based on every little thing we do. Yeah. And we do have to be cautious of whether or not we fully reject the Holy Spirit and blaspheme him and decide to remain in that rejection. I think that could put our salvation at risk. 
But Vincent, you have come out of that decision of rejection. You move back into repentance. And what you may need to do is more clean up of your spiritual life so that the shame and the condemnation don't have so much power over you. Mm -hmm. So I suggest going back through and doing a full confession. You might even go year by year to think about all the sins you've committed. Reconfessing them can help clean out some of the shame and the guilt you have. And if you haven't been baptized yet, choose baptism as well. Well, um, I've been missing my buddy Dave Stoop, and Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you his book, Forgiving Our Fathers, Forgiving Ourselves. I don't know if you need to forgive your father, but there's a great, great amount of material there on forgiving yourself. So you forgive yourself, you accept Christ's forgiveness, and you move on. I'll get that to you, and I'm really, really glad that you called. By the way, let me just mention, in June, we're going to be face-to-face, in person, in Dallas, with our Restore Workshop for women who have been betrayed by a man we don't know if your marriage can be restored but we can restore you we can help you experience restoration Uh, sometimes you feel like or maybe even the guy makes you feel like it was your problem you caused this hey you did not (laughs) no woman has ever caused a man to have a problem with lust that's his problem it's his responsibility to deal with it and we'll help you deal with that and a lot of women have sure found some freedom there we would love for just call us 1 800 New Life and we'll tell you about it. It's in June. It's in Dallas. Now let's go back to the calls and uh, how about we talk with Sarah? And Sarah is calling us from uh, Kansas City. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, good. Um, good. My question is um, well, I've been married 20 years and my husband recovered from alcoholism a couple years ago okay has done well with me and we were to divorce but we did reconcile our marriage in january um and i had forgiven him my issue is i'm feeling frustrated and a little disconnected i feel like he gave a really good effort for like a month and then maybe he's let up and i find myself easily worrying that we're going to go back to the old ways where I did all the work and um, we didn't have the intimacy and just, I guess I'm just fearful of going back to old ways. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What what does his recovery look like? What does he do in a given week to support, to strengthen his recovery and to grow as a man? Because if we have a problem with addiction, it rips us and our character to pieces we got to rebuild that so what is he doing in the area of recovery and growth well he does attend aa either once or twice a week and he's very active in working with his sponsor great um, great news okay yes okay um so he has done really well i'm not afraid that he's going to go back to addiction but I'm right. afraid of going back to the disconnect. Well, when you oh. recover from alcoholism, um, that recovery doesn't restore relationship. It, it can clear up some things when you make amends and things like that. But if you were right. not too hot at relationships before the addiction and recovery, then you're probably not going to be uh, too nurturing, loving, and open afterwards. So. What I'm hearing is he needs additional help. Now, what has his response been when you've talked to him about the situation? What's he said to you? Well, he said, I I do recognize I need to um, try harder because we've done some Bible um, plans together on marriage. And he says that, but over the last month, I don't feel him doing it. I, I just feel that he's kind of yeah. getting um, complacent. Okay. And, and I'm just, it makes me scared. And I, mm-hmm. I have talked to him about that, but I don't know that he really gets it. Well, you know, if you've and ever heard scary. me talk about addiction, complacency is the first mm-hmm. step in relapse. And so that you're wanting him to do something and not get complacent because complacency goes to confusion, confusion to compromise, compromise to catastrophe. Mm. So Jill, uh, what are your thoughts here? Sarah, I I think some of what you're feeling in the wake of somebody in recovery is perfectly normal. 
I, I'm wondering if you've done any of your own work by attending Al-Anon or a CODA group? Yeah. Okay, so you're involved yeah. in that. And do you have a sponsor there that you can talk to? I do things not have my No, I do not have my own sponsor right now. I've just been doing counseling, but I have Oh, not okay. So you're doing counseling. A, so a yeah, 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 that's that's good as well. You might consider getting a sponsor in Al-Anon. Uh, so it, it is really normal. It, you're telling me that you're not afraid of him relapsing. And as Steve is pointing out, okay, not yet. But I think that right. your anxiety can sometimes be a good barometer. Now, sometimes it's reflective of this is the way it used to be. Now, this is feeling familiar. And so now I'm really scared. And it may not mean the same thing, but it certainly means that you need to check things out with him. And in terms of, you know, how responsive is he? I think letting him know, I really need you to be responsive. I need it to be okay that when I feel anxious, I come to you and we talk about it. Because then that helps me to not try to micromanage or mm -hmm. go back into my codependent behaviors. So to be able to put it out there, I think, is really important. And then as he's now in recovery for the addiction... Steve's right. It's time to now move into how do we deal with the relational issues that were here before he got into recovery, right? This is a continuation of the work, and perhaps adding in some couples therapy would be a really good place to make time for that so that you would have something to count on and a place where you can start to talk about how do we become more emotionally intimate mm, and not fall back into the old patterns? Because re yeah. remember, with addictions, yeah. they're a substitution for emotional intimacy. So, Alice, a thought yeah. here? Well, Sarah, you can add a couple of ingredients to your prior request to move, help move things along. So I want you to make a stronger request of him saying, I'm glad you're willing to do something about our relationship. I want you to pick how, how soon can you bring some action steps to me so we can decide together what we'll do to nurture our relationship and have him set a time to help hold him accountable. And then you might ask him, we strategize this with your sponsor. Let him know I'm asking of this, asking this of you mm -hmm. so that he can help you initiate and move forward. I would say this, okay. to, if, you want, if you want a simple plan, here it is. Say to him, you know, I've been wanting us to draw closer together. Your recovery, I'm not afraid of you relapsing, but I want us to draw closer together. In fact, you've even said that you, you see there could be a problem. Which would you rather yeah. do? Me get a counselor for us to go to, or let's go to this intimacy in marriage, mm -hmm. one day good, experience. Steve. Yep that new life does either way if he's willing well we got great great hope there for both of you but that's what i would do i would just say which i wouldn't say would you i'd say which one is better for you what do you want to do and then just do that all right uh, i'm going to send you how we love that is mylon and Kay's great earth shattering profound book how we love coming your way we'll be back final segment right after this I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages, and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, June 25th through the 27th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. 
Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Really glad that you're with us here today. If you go to 1-800-NEW-LIFE, you call those folks there. They want to help you. They'll find a counselor, send you a book, something that you need. We've got it, including our intensives. They're, they're just life-changing, transformational, best thing that we do you can go and find out all the stuff we do at newlife.com uh, every day i'm going deeper and uh, that's on i mean our youtube channel you can see going deeper and i've been doing a series on toxic faith going over the beliefs in a toxic church or a sect or cult and today i'm going to start recording the ones for uh, a healthy church how do you know it and how do you experience it and then on thursday on the nrb network 11 o'clock eastern time Life Recovery Today. I hope you'll join me for that. Well, our final caller is going to be Dee Dee. I wish I could have gotten to everybody else. She lives in uh, Cincinnati. Uh, hi, Dee Dee. Welcome to New Life Life. How are you today? Hi, guys. I'm good. I just I want to cut right to it. So I've got a daughter that I used to be super close to, and about 10 years ago, things kind of imploded. I don't really know why. She's married okay. and has two beautiful children and is expecting another one. She's 34. And I don't know what I've done. I've asked her many times what I've done that's caused us to, to fall apart. And she says things like I'm controlling and she says things like da la la. And I, it's all the things that I kind of think she's struggling with. But yesterday I was at their home and we were outside. I was playing with the kids, having a great time. And then she kind of, this is just to set up, set it up. I did something with, you know, I pushed this little Jeep that they have. And she's like, you know, you shouldn't do that. It messes with the gears. And I go, oh, I go, okay. And then we were talking, and she goes, you're getting too loud. And she's chided me like that before. I'm too loud. I'm too whatever. And then... Um, I got a question for you here. I got a question. Can I ask yeah. you a question? Yeah. As sure. you look back, as you look back on her growing up and getting older, getting married, can you tell me one of the most controlling things you've ever done that you can remember? Now, think really hard. Be humble. Give me something to work with here, a controlling thing that you did. Because all parents do some mm -hmm. controlling thing. That's their job is to control. But can you think of anything? I do, yeah. Okay, um, what is The it? only thing, okay, so I am thinking, I came from an alcoholic home, so my father mm -hmm. was very, um, could be very volatile. So I was very cognizant of those things. I didn't want to be my parents. And I read your book, Love is a Choice, forever ago, and that was huge for me. And I read everything you guys put out, but... The most controlling thing I can think of is I was overprotective. Mm. I didn't want her to fail in anything. And so I would kind of be that, you know, mm -hmm. okay. that, I think that. I, I think so, that. I'm going to turn this over to Jill and to Alice after I give you a little suggestion. You <laughs> either in person or on the phone say to your daughter, you know, the other day you said I was really controlling and uh, when you say things i listen i love you i care but i think you're really smart so i thought back on why it is that you would say that being overly controlling i gotta tell you i i realized my background with an alcoholic dad caused me to be i just kind of the needle on being overprotective it was just too too far over there and I was 
I was overly protective, and I'm sure that that felt like you were being controlled. And I hope that you mm -hmm. could forgive me for that because you didn't deserve to be raised with a reaction to the way I was raised. You deserve to be raised the way you best could have been raised, not in reaction to yeah. my alcoholic father. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll ask uh, Alice and Jill to, to Well, chime and to in add here. into that, and it would have been better for me to have been more sensitive to who you are as there a person yeah, and good. what you yeah. needed and instead of what I needed. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I did about six months ago, I did tell her that. And I even said I would, I would be honored to pay for counseling for you for a year to undo what I did. And I, t I told them that when they were being raised, you know, when they graduated from grad school or, mm. or even undergrad, I was like, I, I want to give you the gift of a year of counseling. So, because yeah. I know I didn't master everything. It, imagine, so I imagine what this would have sounded like. I heard what you said and I am going to go, I'm going to start counseling next week because I, I want to clear this up and I want to have a, a really clean view of what happened back there and how to resolve that and i also yeah. would would pay for you to have counseling versus if you just mm -hmm. tell somebody i'll pay for your counseling it's like well i hurt you but and you go oh. here i'll help you get it fixed but i'm not going to do anything about me mm -hmm. oh yeah i didn't i didn't couch it like that i promise yeah. you i didn't i've been in counseling okay. for four years oh good so good. that's what i think and so when we would get in these arguments i would say sweetheart would you consider coming with me or whatever and then she would say some things that were not very it broke my mm. heart and i ba i said Aww. baby i go i i'm so sorry i'm so so yeah. so so sorry yeah. but i don't know what to do now because like okay. i said something we had a conversation today and she wouldn't say she was sorry i said sweetheart i'm so sorry and she goes i'm not saying i'm sorry i have no reason to say i'm sorry i go okay then so it's, mm. i don't know what to okay. do so, do you, so do let's you uh, let's hear from alice here real quick and and uh yeah okay. alice what are you thinking Dee, Dee, i believe your desire is sincerely to repay relation to repair a relationship with your daughter uh -huh. and and yet mm -hmm. my experience of you in our conversation here is you're, you're kind of quick mm -hmm. to dismiss you're quick to point a finger mm -hmm. back at your daughter, even though what you're saying may be true, but you are not leading uh -huh. with your humility and your sinfulness. You have a tendency okay. to, to try to downplay your daughter's complaints about you and to try to talk about what you've done right. Mm -hmm. So getting humbler faster and quicker to mm -hmm. identify and confess over and over your sin will serve you better in your relationship with your daughter. That okay. will make you look better in her eyes than trying to convince yeah. her that you're good. And a final yes. uh, comment and here is, is it's really important that you ask yourself a question. When I'm with her, am I talking more or am I listening more? Because over-talking takes a breach and mm -hmm. makes it wider, bigger, deeper. Over-listening, well, you can learn some stuff. And a person actually believes you care deeply for them. So I hope that's uh, helpful to you. And uh, how about we send a copy of Forgiving Our uh, Fathers and Mothers. Mm -hmm. uh, two copies, one for her. She, that could really help her with you and one for you with your dad mm -hmm. there. Well, I'm really, um, really glad and thankful for all of you that subscribe to our YouTube channel. We, uh, you know, we just didn't start it that long ago. We already got 10,000 people that are watching on YouTube. Love that. Um, if you haven't, we'd love for you to do that. And then also, um, if you could support our ministry with a one-time gift. There are a lot of people that are depressed in the spring. I've talked about that this month. And so I would send you a copy of Understanding and Loving a Person with Depression. It's from our wellness series, and I think it could be a great blessing to you. And um, you'd be a great blessing to us because a gift of any amount, it really does help us. Emotional freedoms this Saturday, so pre please pray for us or get on that waiting list if you want to. April the 10th, it's Every Man's Battle Workshop, and Restore is in June, and Intimacy in Marriage is in July. Here's what I know. I could not be more thrilled to be part of a ministry that does these intensives where people come and experience results beyond anything they ever imagined. And you could do that too by calling 
new life. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate you guys. Wise wisdom. And thanks to all of you who listen to our program, watch it, uh, pray for us, support us. Thank you so much. I hope and pray something we've said might give you some insight into you or someone else, make life just a little bit better, deeper, and richer. See Thanks for listening. Time. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend, watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE.